I know my jumper says bar humbug, but that is absolutely not how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> Welcome to my first Christmas video of the season. I know I say this every year, but I come alive in November and December, and I have got a lot of videos coming your way. If you like Christmas, buckle up, because I've got DIYs, decorating, vlogs, and anything Christmassy you can think about, I'm probably making it for this YouTube channel. So over the next few months, I've got one to two videos coming out a week. Most of them are Christmas, but there's a few non-Christmassy ones thrown in there as well, because I know not all of you celebrate Christmas, but I am starting early, and that's because I'm doing a lot of DIYs, and I know those of you who like to craft want to get your supplies in, and and be able to have the time to make things. So let's get started. Today's video is DIY Christmas decorations and these have a little bit of a traditional feel to them. So if that's your cup of tea, I really hope you enjoy these projects. So the first DIY I want to share with you guys today is this letter board. It's so simple to make. It doesn't look it, but I promise you it is. And you can actually make this for any time of the year, but I made a quite a Christmassy one and I wanna show you how I did it. So you can use a photo frame for this, but I'm using this plaque from Home Bargains. It's got a nice handy little chain on it so I can hang it up. And then some Christmassy paper. I'm using a piece of scrapbook paper. You can use wrapping paper too. Measure the inside of your plaque or your frame and then draw this measurement onto the paper and cut it out. You're gonna want to make sure that the plaque that you're using has a very deep frame because we're gonna add some bits and pieces to this in a minute. But as you can see, I just cut mine out and placed it on the inside. Once that's done, you're going to want to glue it down. I like using a glue stick for this because then there's no like lumps and bumps underneath the paper when it's fully stuck down. With that done, we can move on to cutting the ledges for our letters. I'm using a piece of square dowel. This is one centimeter by one centimeter. And once again, I am just using my little tiny hacksaw from Poundland and my mitre box. These are so inexpensive. They don't cost very much and anyone can use them. Just be careful if you're gonna make this project. I cut four of these for my letters and then used a little bit of Gorilla Wood Glue, tapped a small amount onto the back of the dowel because you don't want it going everywhere and then placed them down equal distances apart, making sure that my Scrabble letters would fit. Very important, you wanna make sure your letters fit before you stick them down. And then I'm using just little balls of blue tack to stick my Scrabble letters on. This way I can move them around if I want to take them off and put up a different phrase. The letters were from the craft section of the range, but you can find them in lots of craft stores or on Amazon. As you can see, I spelt be merry and bright on mine. You can put any kind of Christmassy phrase that you want. This is how it turned out. Next up, I wanted to share with you a Christmas house project. I am obsessed with little Christmas houses, Christmas villages. I just love anything that's miniature. It's adorable. And this year I really wanted to incorporate it into my DIYs, but it's quite daunting to try and make something like that from scratch. And I wanted to give you guys an easy option, which is where this project comes in. Two words, birdhouse. Let me show you how I did it. So here is my birdhouse. I picked up two of these from the works and they were only three pounds, which is quite a bargain for such a big piece. The main thing that was standing in my way of making these into Christmas houses was this little piece of dowel. So I hacked that off once again with my little Poundland hacksaw and then I sanded that down to get rid of any rough edges and I feel like it looks a lot less like a birdhouse now. <laughs> The great thing about this project is that you can really do anything that you'd like to decorate these houses with. You can paint them, glitter them, stain them. What I'm doing here is using some old wood stain that I had lying around and just stain all over the houses from top to bottom before I started painting. I wanted to make sure all of the surfaces were done in case I changed my mind about the design. At least I had a little bit more freedom if it was completely stained. 
To make this feel a little bit more like a cabin in the woods, I painted the window frames white. I had to give them a few coats because the acrylic paint I was using was uh, not brilliant, not very opaque, but it's fine after a few coats. And I also painted the roofs and the little ledge at the bottom as well. And now it's time to accessorize. If there's anything I love more than Christmas decorations, it's mini Christmas decorations. So I took some Christmas pipe cleaner and made that into a tiny little wreath and then just cut some of this striped string and folded it over a few times and tied it in a bow just to add a little bit of decoration to the wreath. I made this to cover up the hole at the top of the birdhouse and it's so cute and tiny. I'm obsessed with it. I also made a few little garlands to stick at the bottom of the window frames as well and I'm just using hot glue to apply these because it's two different types of material and I just thought seeing as it was standing upright the hot glue would stick it instantly. I added my wreath and a couple of little tiny mushrooms that I found at my local garden center and that topped it off. I like to style this with a couple of bottle brush trees and some little animals. You can also add some tinsel or some of those tiny fairy lights if you'd like, but I kept mine quite plain because I'm going for a little bit of a woodland theme this year, so I want it to look quite natural. This next project has a little bit of a modern twist to it. It's a minimal kind of Scandinavian inspired embroidery hoop winter scene, but you can make this look very modern or traditional depending on what you wanna put on it. So here's how I made it. So these were the supplies that I picked out for this project. I wasn't really sure where I was going to go with it, but I just wanted to have a bit of fun. So I started by taking the embroidery hoop. It's quite a large one. I removed the outer edge and just kept the inside. And then I arranged my winter scene inside the hoop. I'm taking this polar bear ornament that I had from last year and hot gluing him onto the bottom right in the center. And then to either side of him, I'm adding a couple of bottle brush trees. Some of these were from the craft store. Some of them were from Ikea last year. I took the stands off and bent the wire backwards so they'd sit better on the hoop. And then I just added a thick dollop of hot glue, sat the wire onto the embroidery hoop and let it dry. To make the scene look a little bit more interesting, I added a few different sizes of trees. And then once those were dry, I also wanted to add something above the polar bear. I decided against using these wooden stars and I went for the wooden snowflakes instead. These are actually present toppers from Sainsbury's and to attach them, I'm using a piece of cotton thread, some hot glue, and then I'm adding the thread into the hot glue. You couldn't see very well because my camera was auto focusing and I didn't notice, I'm so sorry, but I then took the thread and I looped it around the top of the embroidery hoop, tied it a few times, and then added a bit more hot glue to make sure it was gonna stay in place. So you can see here that they're kind of swinging around a little bit. That's the effect that I wanted. And this is the finished hoop. To hang this up, you'll just want to attach another piece of string to the top of the hoop and then you can hang it anywhere you'd like. I think this would look really nice in a window. And last but not least, I made a Santa hat garland. I found these little tiny hats in home bargains. They were 80 pence for six, which is an absolute bargain, cheaper than Poundland, and I knew I had to craft something with them, so I wanted to show you how I made this garland. So these are the mini hats. They're actually cutlery holders for your dinner table at Christmas time. I think they're really cute. They come with six in a pack, but I only used five. I really like odd numbers when it comes to stuff like this. So all I did was thread a really thick needle with this red and white stripy thread. I doubled it over to make it extra strong. And then once I was done threading the first hat through, I added a knot to make sure that it wasn't gonna go anywhere. And then I threaded another hat on, tied another knot, made sure that they were equal distances apart. You can see what I'm doing here. It's very, very simple, 
but it's quite a fun little craft that you could make with your friends or your family over at Christmas time. As you can see I had a spare hat so I had to put it on my little friend here who also made his way onto my mantelpiece but that's where I ended up putting this little hat garland. I think I might put it in my bedroom in the end but it's quite cute and it was just a fun and easy craft to make. So those are the DIYs for my first Christmas video of the season. Oh, I'm so excited. Anyway, I've got tons more projects coming your way. If you like crafts or decorating or just Christmas in general, do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so. And make sure to like this video. I'd love to know that you guys did like it because I wanna make so many more. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Happy holidays and I'll see you next time. Bye.